Silent Hill has been a very interesting series that's been around since 1999 and has been mostly dormant outside of Pachinko Machine releases since PT. The series has been very well known for its handling of psychological horror, and I was surprised a few years ago to stumble across a Silent Hill arcade game at one of the arcades I would go to. I then found out the game was unofficially ported to PC, and I played through the game and shelved the idea by putting it on the list of things to do, which brings us to today. Silent Hill, the arcade, is an on-rail shooter set in 1993 surrounding the disappearance of the boat The Little Baroness in Toluca Lake by the town of Silent Hill back in 1918. The game puts the player, or players if you're playing cooperatively, as university students Eric and Tina. Eric and Tina have come to Silent Hill with their friends Bill, Jesse, Ryan and George to investigate the mysteries surrounding the town, with Eric taking a keen interest in the mystery of The Little Baroness and Tina meeting up with her friend Emily, a young girl living with her father in the town. While staying at Jack's Inn, Eric has a nightmare and notices that an unusual fog has enveloped the area. As he heads outside, Tina asks him if he'd seen Jesse, and Eric, noticing that Bill isn't there either, decides to investigate. They quickly find Bill and have little time to prepare as they're attacked by monsters, and the game has you begin by shooting at them to defend yourself. The game does take a lot of cues from Silent Hill 2, 3 and 4, but does that make it a good game? Find out in... The Good. The biggest thing I liked about the game was the nods it has to the other Silent Hill games. Locations such as Brookhaven Hospital, Toluca Prison, and the Lakeside Amusement Park are all familiar locations to anyone who has played the other Silent Hill games, given that you visit Brookhaven Hospital in Silent Hill 2 and 3, the Prison in 2, and the Amusement Park in 1 and 3. Even the disappearance of the Little Baroness was referenced in a note found in Toluca Prison in Silent Hill 2. I recognise some of the rooms as places I'd been through in the games, and as a nod to Silent Hill 4, nearing the end of the game you descend the spiral staircase between worlds. It just doesn't have that giant hole that you could escape back home with. They even carry on the running gag of a scene where your character can put their hand down a toilet to reach something, something that was made famous in Silent Hill 2. I did like some of the original bosses they had for you to fight. While you see some returning monsters from the other games, which I'll touch upon later, the game manages to retain some of Silent Hill's well-known symbolism with these original creatures and ties them into the circumstances of the game's plot. One such monster, a flying beast known as Tuberculosis that you fight on the roof of Brookhaven Hospital, could possibly represent an illness that had plagued Hana, the girl who had fallen overboard in the opening. Another named Mama, whom you fight in the Labyrinth Graveyard, represents her mother. Interesting thing to also note is that the music that plays during that fight is the same as the one that plays when you fight Walter Sullivan in Silent Hill 4 another character with mother issues. Not to mention that the Labyrinth Graveyard is where you find his gravestone in Silent Hill 2. The game also features different endings based on what you had done in the game and whether you had saved your friends or not. Speaking of different endings though, it looks like we're done here so let's move on to... The Bad. Funny enough, the main issue I have with The Bad here actually relates to both the points I'd made in The Good. The references to other games in the series also works as a double-edged sword. While I do appreciate and understand how the locations with the exception of the shopping mall and the train are linked to your ultimate destination of Toluca Lake to solve the mystery of the Little Baroness, the monsters you face along the way merely seem to be there as fan service, and a lot of them bearing very little relevance to the plot outside of I fought this thing in Silent Hill 2, 3 or 4. The monsters you fight along the way range from the Hummers and Gumhead in Silent Hill 4, to the Doubleheads and Insane Cancer and Numb Bodies in Silent Hill 3, to the Bubblehead Nurses from Silent Hill 2, though some of them have guns like in Silent Hill 3. This is a few of the examples as I can drag on for longer listing where everything was from, and the references don't just stop at monsters. Some of the bosses you fight are from other Silent Hill games as well, such as the Split Worm from Silent Hill 3, and of course Silent Hill 2's Pyramid Head. While it was nice to see them and the reason for the inclusion in the game was to make this an obvious Silent Hill game, these monsters and bosses all have symbolic meanings to the games that they originated from, and by putting them in the game, it really downplays what they're supposed to symbolise as they have little to no relevance to Eric, Tina and their friends. I feel you can still have this game as a Silent Hill game by retaining the setting, but using different monsters to symbolise the plot of the game instead of recycling from Silent Hill 2, 3 and 4. It certainly can work with the original bosses that are there already, so why aren't there original monsters? I don't know. The only other gripe I had with the game is what actually happens to your friends if you rescue them. With the exception of Bill, all of your other friends can be rescued if you beat the boss of the area quickly enough. There's a scene where you reunite with them and then, poof, they're gone, never to be seen or heard from again. 
Would have been nice to have expanded the game's script with banter between them all, or even mentioned that the friend had gone away safely, or remained distressed if they failed to save them. I certainly wouldn't send the friends back through areas of the game by themselves and without a weapon though. Other than that, I think I've ranted on long enough, so let's wrap it all up with... The Opinion At the end of the day, I did have fun with Silent Hill the Arcade, and the game makes for a good hour of mindless fun shooting at things on the screen. But I think the references to Silent Hill 2, 3 and 4 works both in its favour and against it. I loved revisiting locations from those games, but I'm not the biggest fan of downplaying the symbolism some of the monsters from those games represent. And to be fair, it is hard to express this on a medium where people could run out of money or tokens before reaching the end of the game. Still, it's good fan service, and it did get me to play through Silent Hill 2, 3 and 4, gathering my reference footage. And I'm not going to lie, I had a lot of fun doing that. If you're a fan of Silent Hill, then this game is something to look at, but for mindless fun. Don't think too deeply on it. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Silent Hill the Arcade... The Scraper from Silent Hill 3 out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.